Good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the Baptist Bread Devotional and Scripture Song Broadcast for this 10th day of September. And today's title is Against or For? Question mark. And so, uh, before I get started on the topic, uh, I'd like to greet you as always in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Amen. And praise the Lord that uh, He too can... Uh, give you eternal life if you would just humble yourself and call upon him to save you. Amen. All right, so we're going to start with today's scripture song, which is from uh, John 20, verses 30 and 31, and then John 21, verse 25. So let me press play, and we'll sing along with Brother Dean and Sister Patty. Amen. <clears throat> John 20, 30 and 31, 31. and John 21, 25. And many, many other signs, signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are, are not written in this book. But these, these are, are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing ye might have life through his name. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written every one. I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and sing this. <clears throat> Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that he might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing he might have life through his name, through his name, in his name, amen. There are so many other things. Which Jesus did, the which if they should be written, everyone. I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. He might believe that Jesus is the Christ the Son of God, and that believing he might have life through his name, life through his name, through his name, amen, amen, life through his name, amen. Praise the Lord. Okay, so we'll go back and do that uh, again towards the end of the broadcast. But now it's time to get into today's topic, against or for. And the passage is from Matthew 12, 30a. It says, He that is not with me is against me. And this is Jesus speaking in Matthew 12, verse uh, 30. And the author today is G.T., that would be the initials for, get there, GT. That would be the initials for uh, Gary Trout, and he's the pastor of Bell Point Baptist Church in, uh, let me see here, uh, Hinton, West Virginia. So let me read you what he wrote here on this topic against or for. <clears throat> he writes here, uh, uh, starting out, he says, Having the word of God against you is indeed a terrible, disastrous calamity. It sure is. So make sure that we are not against uh, God and his word. Amen. And we're for it. He says, for instance, I am against you, saith the Lord God. Ezekiel 13, 8b. Nevertheless, to have the word of God for you is a terrific, desirable condition. Amen. And hallelujah. Uh, no weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Isaiah fifty four seventeen, and he says here I read about uh, I read about two Romanists, a man and his wife, who many years ago possessed a copy of the Scriptures. 
of which they had never seen before, the husband began to read it in one uh, night as he sat beside the fire with the word of God, said, Wife, if this book is right, we are wrong. Yeah, uh, he cannot, or excuse me, he continued reading, and a few days later bemoaned, Wife, if this book is right, we are lost. Yeah, uh, more interested and eager than ever before to see what the word of the Lord said, he studied the book until one night he could joyfully exclaim, Wife, if this book is true, we are saved. Amen. Hallelujah. So they went from being wrong and lost to being saved. Amen. Uh, the same book that showed them that they were undone, unprepared, and unsaved also revealed to them the gospel of salvation. That is the glory of the word of God. It is against us and until it leads us out of our sin to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then it becomes a fountain of life and a spring of living water. Before it was against us, but now it justifies us. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Right? So if God is for us, who can be against us? Romans 8.31b. Hallelujah for that. So you too can be... Uh, can come out of being uh, wrong and lost to being saved and right. Amen. Praise the Lord. So I hope you'll do that today. If you haven't done, done so already, and take the heed of this devotional and get in the Word of God and read it and look for yourself that uh, you can find salvation through the Word of God and then Jesus Christ will save your soul if you'll call upon Him. Amen. All right. So that's the end of the topic. Against or for. Amen. All right, that's a good little topic today. And now it's time to get into today's hymn and hymn story. All right, so go ahead and a second. All right, so let's see what is that. Okay. All right, get there. All right, so today's hymn and hymn story is from the hymn We Gather Together. And it says here an anonymous Dutch hymn and Dutch folk song. And so there's three stanzas here, and so uh, I'm not really sure of the tune. So I'll play the back background music here, and we'll get the tune from that. And we just stanzas. <clears throat> All right, it says here, We gather together to ask the Lord's blessing. He chastens and hastens his will to make known. The wicked oppressing now cease from distressing. Sing praises to his name. He forgets not his own. Beside us, to guide us, our God with us joining, or dis or ordaining, maintaining his kingdom divine. So from the beginning, the fight we were winning, though uh, thou, Lord, wast at our side, all glory be thine. We all do extol thee, thou Lord, uh, thou leader uh, triumphant, and pray that thou still our defender wilt be. Let thy congregation escape tribulation. Thy name be ever praised. O Lord, make us free. Amen. Praise the Lord. So that is the hymn. All right, and now I'll get into the hymn story. This is a good hymn. I do remember the, the tune to it. Amen. Once I heard it. All right, so now we get into the hymn story, We Gather Together, and this was written in 1597, and the passage is from Psalm 102, verse 15. So Psalm 102, verse 15, so we'll go there to Psalm 102, verse 15. All right, 102, 15 says, uh, make sure that's right, all right, 102, 15 it says, So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord, and all the kings of the earth thy glory. Amen. <clears throat> of, of the earth thy glory. All right, so that was uh, 102 verse 15. Amen. <clears throat> all right, so let me go ahead now and read you the story here. All right. It says here, Those who have visited the Netherlands with its picturesque uh, dikes and windmills may be unaware of the terrific struggle for religious freedom that took place 
There in the 16th and 17th centuries, in 1555, the Low Country was given to King Philip II of Spain by his father, Emperor Charles V of Germany. Philip was an arch-Catholic, but the winds of Calvinistic uh, Refor Reformation had reached the Netherlands. Roman Catholic churches were plundered, and the authority of Spain was resisted. In 1557, King Philip sent the dreaded Duke of Elba, uh, Fernando Alvarez de, de to, to, Toledo, uh, to bring the Netherlands back into the Pope's fold. He established a reign of terror during which 10,000 people were executed and another 40,000 exiled. Uh, his ruling council was called the Council of Troubles, but it's better known uh, to history as the Blood Council. The bodies of thousands of people were hung in the streets and on the doorposts of houses. Alva didn't hesitate to massacre whole, massacre whole cities. Wow. Uh, so it says, uh, Alva didn't hesitate to massacre whole cities. An attack on Leiden uh, was stopped only by cutting the dikes and flooding the countryside. On January 6, 1579, the Catholic southern regions of the Netherlands, modern Belgium, declared their allegiance to Philip. But three weeks later, the northern part, modern Holland, refused to submit to the Catholic rule of Spain. In 1581, Holland declared its independence, led by the courageous William of Orange. Uh, Holland was devastated by warfare, and in the process, William was cut down by an assassin's dagger. <laughs> wow. Uh, but the brave nation would not be denied, and eventually Spain lost its hold on the Dutch Republic. This hymn we gather together, which Americans associate with their Thanksgiving uh, holiday, uh, was actually written sometime in 1597 to celebrate Holland's freedom from Spain. Its author, an unknown Dutchman, was full of thanksgiving that his people were finally free from Spanish tyranny and free to worship as they ch uh, chose. Notice how he expressed this theme in these three beautiful verses. The wicked oppressing now cease from distressing, so from the beginning the fight we were winning. Thou, uh, thou Lord, wast at our side, all glory be thine. We do extol thee, uh, thou leader triumphant, and pray that thou still our defender wilt be. Let thy congregation escape tribulation. Thy name be ever praised. O Lord, make us free. Hmm. Amen. All right, so that was an interesting story behind this hymn here. All right, so <clears throat> that is the end of today's hymn and hymn story. And tomorrow's hymn and hymn story will be from the hymn, If Thou But Suffer guide to gu uh, God to guide thee, if thou but suffer God to guide thee. And this is written by uh, George Newer, uh, Newmark. Amen. So George Newmark was the one that wrote this hymn. And this is written in 1641. And the passage is from Psalm 4814. So we'll read that, sing that hymn tomorrow, read it, and then get into that hymn story tomorrow. Amen. So some of these hymns and hymn stories are pretty interesting. Amen. All right, so now we'll go ahead and sing today's scripture song. Actually, we'll go ahead and sing yesterday's, and then we'll conclude with today's. So yesterday's was from Isaiah 25.1. So go press that, play, and sing that. Isaiah 25.1. O oh Lord, Lord, thou art my God. I will exalt, exalt, thee, I will thee, praise thy name, thy name for thou, thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. Amen. O oh Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, praise thy name. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done Wonderful things, thy counsels of old are faithfulness and truth. O oh 
Lord, thou art my God, I will exalt thee. I will praise thy name, praise thy name. I will praise thy name, for thou hast done wonderful things. Thy counts of the whole, thy faithfulness and truth. Amen. All right, now we'll conclude with today's. John 20, 30, and 31, and John 21, 25. And many other signs truly did Jesus in Amen. the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But yep. these are written, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. And there are also many other things which Jesus did, the which if they should be written every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain right. the books that should be written. Amen. Amen. All right, here we go. <clears throat> Many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that he might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing he might have life through his name, life through his name, his name, amen. And there are also many other things. Which Jesus did, the which if they should be written, everyone, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ. The Son of God, that believing he might have life through his name, life through his name, through his name, amen, amen, life through his name, amen. All right, praise the Lord. Okay, so that'll be it for today's broadcast. But before I go, let me go ahead and give you tomorrow's scripture song and then tomorrow's topic for the Baptist Bread Devotional. And tomorrow will be the 11th already. And we'll be singing 1 Corinthians 1, 18. It says, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. Amen. And Brother James is going through the book of uh, 1 Corinthians uh, this semester in the Bible school during the um, church services. Amen. So if you have not heard any of those uh, messages yet, they're pretty good so far. So go check those out. Uh, you can watch them either by going to his YouTube page, which is uh, James Knox Sermons, or go into the website at www.jameswknox.org. And that's the church website and the church YouTube page. Amen. And uh, so that's that. And then the scripture songs you can get uh, by going to Brother Dean and Sister Patty's website at www.dailyscripturesongs.com. All right. And so tomorrow's uh, topic will be titled, A Song in My Heart. And the passage is from Ephesians 5.19. So that will be tomorrow's uh, topic. And if you'd like to get uh, box of these devotionals, they're available at the website here at www.timgreenministries.org. All right. And then, of course, the hymn book here. We're on book two and been on book two for a few days now already. And some interesting stories so far in, in, uh, in behind these hymns. So, all right. And then tomorrow's hymn story in hymn will be, again, If Thou But Suffer God to Guide Thee. And... So this is Then Sings My Soul, Book 2, 150 of the World's Greatest Hymn Stories, 
written by Robert J. Morgan. Amen. All right, well, that'll be it for today. So thanks for watching, and may the Lord richly bless you until we meet again here, there, or in the air. Amen. So praise the Lord. All right, bye for now. Remember, Jesus saves. Believe on him if you have not done so already.